the Monmouth Rebellion, also known as the Revolt of the West or the West Country Rebellion, was an attempt to overthrow James II, the Duke of York who had become King of England, Scotland, and Ireland upon the death of his elder brother Charles II on 6 February 1685. James II was a Roman Catholic, and some Protestants under his rule opposed his kingship. James Scott, 1st Duke of Monmouth, an illegitimate son of Charles II, claimed to be rightful heir to the throne and attempted to displace James II. Plans were discussed for several different actions to overthrow the monarch. Following the failure of the Rye House plot to assassinate Charles II and James, in 1683, while Monmouth was in self-imposed exile in the Dutch Republic, the Monmouth Rebellion was coordinated with the rebellion in Scotland, where Archibald Campbell, the Earl of Argyll, landed with a small force. The Duke of Monmouth had been popular in the southwest of England, so he planned to recruit troops locally and take control of the area before marching on London. Monmouth landed at Lyme Regis on the 11th of June 1685. In the following few weeks, his growing army of nonconformists, artisans, and farm workers fought a series of skirmishes with local militias and regular soldiers commanded by Louis de Doras, 2nd Earl of Feversham, and John Churchill, who later became the Duke of Marlborough. Monmouth's forces were unable to compete with the regular army and failed to capture the key city of Bristol. The rebellion ended with the defeat of Monmouth's army at the Battle of Sedgemoor on 6 July 1685 by forces led by Feversham and Churchill. Monmouth was executed for treason on 15 July 1685. Many of his supporters were tried during the Bloody Assizes, led by Judge Jeffreys, and were condemned to death or transportation. James II was then able to consolidate his power. He reigned until 1688, when he was overthrown in a coup d'état by William of Orange in the Glorious Revolution. Duke of Monmouth Monmouth was an illegitimate son of Charles II. There had been rumours that Charles had married Monmouth's mother, Lucy Walter, but no evidence was forthcoming, and Charles always said that he only had one wife, Catherine of Braganza. Monmouth had been appointed commander-in-chief of the English army by his father in 1672 and captain-general in 1678. Enjoying some successes in the Netherlands in the Third Anglo-Dutch War. Context. The English Civil War had left resentment among some of the population about the monarchy and the penalties which had been imposed on the supporters of the Commonwealth. The southwest of England contained several towns where opposition remained strong. Fears of a potential Catholic monarch persisted, intensified by the failure of Charles II and his wife to produce any children. A defrocked Anglican clergyman, Titus Oates, spoke of a popish plot to kill Charles and to put the Duke of York on the throne. The Earl of Shaftesbury, a former government minister and a leading opponent of Catholicism, attempted to have James excluded from the line of succession. Some members of Parliament even proposed that the crown go to Charles's illegitimate son, James Scott, who became the Duke of Monmouth. In 1679, with the Exclusion Bill, which would exclude the king's brother and heir presumptive, James, Duke of York, from the line of succession, in danger of passing, Charles II dissolved Parliament. Two further parliaments were elected in 1680 and 1681, but were dissolved for the same reason. After the Rye House plot of 1683, an attempt to assassinate both Charles and James, Monmouth went into self-imposed exile in the Netherlands and gathered supporters in The Hague. Monmouth was a Protestant and had toured the southwest of England in 1680 where he had been greeted amicably by crowds in towns such as Chard and Taunton. So long as Charles II remained on the throne, Monmouth was content to live a life of pleasure in Holland, while still hoping to accede peaceably to the throne. The accession of James II and coronation at Westminster Abbey on 23 April 1685 put an end to these hopes. Plan 
The Monmouth Rebellion was planned in Holland and coordinated with another rebellion in Scotland led by Archibald Campbell, the Earl of Argyll. Several areas of England were considered as potential locations for rebellion, including Cheshire and Lancashire along with the South West, as these were seen as having the highest number of opponents of the monarchy. Argyle and Monmouth both began their expeditions from Holland, where James's nephew and son-in-law, William of Orange, had not detained them or put a stop to their recruitment efforts. Argyle sailed to Scotland and, on arriving there, raised recruits mainly from his own clan, the Campbells, as part of the Scottish Revolt. He had previously been involved in the Rye House Plot of 1683. Another important member of the rebellion was Robert Ferguson, a fanatical Scottish Presbyterian minister. He was also known as the Plotter. It was Ferguson who drew up Monmouth's proclamation, and he who was most in favour of Monmouth being crowned king. Thomas Hayward there was a goldsmith from Taunton and a Whig politician a man of considerable wealth and influence who had been jailed during a political campaign calling for a new parliament. He was also fined the huge sum of £5,000 for uttering seditious words. After his release from jail, he fled to Holland and became the paymaster general to the rebellion. To raise the funds for ships and weaponry, Monmouth pawned many of his belongings. His wife Anne Scott, first Duchess of Buccleuch, and her mother also pawned their jewellery to hire the Dutch warship Peldivenberg, from Lyme Regis to Sedgemoor. On 30 May 1685, Monmouth set sail for southwest England, a strongly Protestant region, with three small ships, four light field guns, and 1,500 muskets. He landed on the 11th of June with 82 supporters, including Lord Grey of Wark, Nathaniel Wade, and Andrew Fletcher of Sultan. They gathered about 300 men on the first day at Lyme Regis in Dorset, where a long statement prepared by Ferguson denounced the king. King James had previously received intelligence about the impending plot and the ships leaving Holland ten days before. He was warned of Monmouth's arrival soon after the first landing. The mayor of the town, Gregory Alford, informed the local militias while Samuel Damsel and another customs officer rode from Lyme to London, arriving on 13 June, having ridden 200 miles. To face Monmouth's rebels, John Churchill was given command of the regular foot in the King's army, and the honour of leading the campaign passed to Earl of Feversham. It would take a few days to assemble the army and travel from London to the West Country, therefore initial defence was left to local militias. Over the next couple of days volunteers arrived in Lyme offering to serve under Monmouth. By 15 June he had a force in excess of 1,000 men. Fletcher shot and killed Dare and was then put under arrest and sent back to the frigate Helderinburg. The next day, 40 cavalry and 400 foot soldiers, under the command of Lord Grey and Wade, moved on to the nearby town of Bridport, where they encountered 1,200 men from the local Royalist Dorset Militia. The skirmish ended with the retreat of Grey and the cavalry followed by Wade with the foot soldiers. Many of the militiamen deserted and joined Monmouth's army. Following this confrontation, Lord Albemarle led a royalist force from Exeter towards the forces of the Duke of Somerset, who were approaching Lyme Regis from the opposite direction. Monmouth learned of the approach of royalist reinforcements and departed, but instead of marching to London, he headed north with his force towards the county of Somerset. On 15 June he fought with the militia at Axminster, taking the town before the militias could join up. More recruits joined his disorganised force, which was now around 6,000, consisting mostly of nonconformists, artisans, and farm workers armed with farm tools. One famous supporter was the young Daniel Defoe. Monmouth again denounced the king in Chard and was the subject of a coronation in Taunton on 20 June 1685, against the wishes of some of his Republican supporters such as Wade. The Taunton Corporation was forced to witness the event at Sword Point outside the White Hart Inn to encourage the support of the country gentry. 
In Taunton, Monmouth was joined by many new supporters and formed a new regiment of 800 men. The King's force of dragoons under Churchill continued to close on Monmouth, arriving in Chard on 19 June. With the assistance of the local militias they attempted to stop new recruits arriving in Taunton to join Monmouth. Feversham meanwhile moved with his forces into Bristol, on the assumption that this would be Monmouth's next target and took over all charge of the campaign. Monmouth and his growing force then continued north via Bridgewater, where he took up residence at Bridgewater Castle, Glastonbury and Shepton Mallet in worsening weather. Meanwhile, the Royal Navy captured Monmouth's ships, cutting off any hope of an escape back to the continent. The Royalist forces of Churchill, who was now in charge, and of Feversham, in Bristol, also received reinforcements who had marched from London. On 24 June, Monmouth's army encamped at Pensford, and a small force skirmished with the Gloucester militia to take control of Cainsham, a vital crossing point over the River Avon. Monmouth intended to attack the city of Bristol. However, he heard the city had been occupied by Henry Somerset, 1st Duke of Beaufort. There were inconclusive skirmishes with a force of lifeguards commanded by Feversham. These attacks gave the impression that there was a much larger royalist force in the vicinity than there actually was. Several historians have speculated that if Monmouth had marched as quickly as possible for Bristol at this point, when it was only protected by the Gloucestershire militia, he would probably have been able to take the city and the final outcome of the rebellion might have been very different. Once Bristol had been taken, more recruits would have been attracted to the rebellion and a later march on London would have been possible. Monmouth left his headquarters at Canesham Abbey and moved towards Bath, which had also been occupied by royalist troops, making entry into the city impossible. Monmouth camped in Phillips Norton, where his forces were attacked on 27 June by the leading elements of Feversham's forces which had now combined into a larger force but were still awaiting their artillery. The Duke of Grafton led some cavalry, dragoons, and 500 musketeers into the village, where they were surrounded by the rebels and had to hack through hedges to escape. They were rescued by Churchill and withdrew with approximately 20 losses on each side, however each side believed that the other had taken greater losses. Monmouth then marched overnight to Froome arriving on 28 June. The morale of Monmouth's forces started to collapse as news of the failure of the rebellion in Scotland arrived that day. While the makeshift army was camped in Froome, Argyle's small force had been involved in minor skirmishes at Greenock and Elongra. He took Ard Kinglass Castle. But after disagreements with key supporters about when and where to fight the Royalists commanded by Ross and William Cleland, his supporters dwindled away and the Scottish rebellion failed. The rebels, heading for Warminster got as far as Trowbridge, but Royalist forces cut off the route and Monmouth turned back towards Somerset through Shepton Mallet, arriving in Wells on 1 July. The soldiers damaged the Bishop's Palace and west front of Wells Cathedral, tearing lead from the roof to make bullets, breaking the windows, smashing the organ and the furnishings, and for a time stabling their horses in the nave. Feversham aimed to contain the rebels in the southwest until the rest of his forces, including three battalions from Holland, arrived. In the light of propaganda suggesting the rebels had an army of 40,000 and that 500 royalist troops had been lost at Norton St. Philip, Feversham was ordered to engage Monmouth's forces. On 30 June the final parts of Feversham's army, including his artillery, arrived and eventually Monmouth was pushed back via Shepton Mallet to the Somerset levels, where Alfred the Great had found refuge in his conflicts with the Vikings. Becoming hemmed in at Bridgewater on 3 July, he ordered his troops to fortify the town. Battle of Sedgemoor Monmouth was finally defeated by Feversham with John Churchill, his second in command, on 6 July at the Battle of Sedgemoor. Once Monmouth's force had entered and started to fortify Bridgewater, he sent some of his cavalry to collect six cannon from Minehead. 
He planned to stay in Bridgewater until they returned and then break out and head for Bristol. Feversham and his army of 500 horse and 1,500 militiamen camped on the edge of Sedgemoor at the village of Western Zoyland. Monmouth could view them from the Tower of Church of St. Mary and may have inspected them more closely from the Church of St. Mary in Chedzoy. Before deciding to attack them, the Duke eventually led his untrained and ill-equipped troops out of Bridgewater at around 10 p.m. to undertake a nighttime attack on the King's army. They were guided by Richard Godfrey, the servant of a local farmer, along the old Bristol Road towards Bordrip. With their limited cavalry in the vanguard, they turned south along Bradney Lane and Marsh Lane and came to the open moor with its deep and dangerous rinus. There was a delay while the Rhine was crossed and the first men across startled a royalist patrol. A shot was fired and the horsemen from the patrol galloped off to report to Feversham. The superior training of the regular army and their horses routed the rebel forces by outflanking them. His untrained supporters were quickly defeated by the professionals, and hundreds were cut down by cannon and musket fire. The death count on the rebel side has variously been given as between 727 and 2,700, with royalist losers of 27 who were buried in the churchyard of the Church of St. Mary the Virgin in Western Zoyland, which was used as a prison for rebel soldiers. After Sedgemoor, Monmouth fled from the field of battle, but was captured in a ditch on 8 July. Despite begging for mercy and claims of conversion to Roman Catholicism, he was beheaded at Tower Hill by Jack Ketch on 15 July 1685. It is said that it took multiple blows of the axe to sever his head. His dukedoms of Monmouth and Buccleuch were forfeited, but the subsidiary titles of the dukedom of Monmouth were restored to the Duke of Buccleuch. The subsequent bloody assizes of Judge Jeffreys were a series of trials of Monmouth's supporters in which 320 people were condemned to death and around 800 sentenced to be transported to the West Indies. James II took advantage of the suppression of the rebellion to consolidate his power. He asked Parliament to repeal the Test Act and the Habeas Corpus Act, used his dispensing power to appoint Roman Catholics to senior posts, and raise the strength of the standing army. Parliament opposed many of these moves, and on 20 November 1685 James dismissed it. In 1688, when the birth of James Francis Edward Stuart heralded a Catholic succession, James II was overthrown in a coup d'état by William of Orange in the Glorious Revolution at the invitation of the disaffected Protestant establishment. Bibliography Bevan, Brian, James, Duke of Monmouth, London Robert Hale, ISBN 9780-7091-3985-0, Clifton, Robin, Walter, Lucy, Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, Oxford University Press, ISBN 9780198614111, Dunning, Robert, Monmouth Rebellion, Guide to the Rebellion and Bloody Assize, Dovecote Press. ISBN 978-0-9461592399. Clark, Nigel J. Monmouth's West Country Rebellion of 1685. Nigel J. Clark Publications. ISBN 978-0-907683-17-9. Dunning, Robert. The Monmouth Rebellion. A Guide to the Rebellion and Bloody Assizes. Wimborne, Dovecote Press. ISBN 978-0-9461592399. Earl, Peter, Monmouth's Rebels. The Road to Sedgemoor, 1685, London, Weidenfeld and Nicholson. ISBN 978-0-297-77384-9. Fraser, Antonia, King Charles II. London, Weidenfeld and Nicholson, ISBN 978-0-297-775713, Ferguson, James, Robert Ferguson, The Plotter, Wildside Press, 
ISBN 9781434471314. Harris, Tim. Revolution. The Great Crisis of the British Monarchy, 1685-1720. Penguin Books. ISBN 9780713997590. Miller, John. James II. New Haven. Yale University Press. ISBN 9780300087284. Sawyers, Jeff. The Monmouth Rebellion and the Bloody Assizes. Two Rivers Press. ISBN 9781901677492. Spencer, Charles. Blenheim, Weidenfeld and Nicholson. ISBN 9780297846093. Roots, Ivan. The Monmouth Rising. Devon Books. ISBN 9780861147793. Tinsey, John. Sedgemoor 1685. Marlborough's First Victory. Barnsley. Pen and Sword Books. ISBN 9781844151479. Wiles, John. Sedgemoor 1685. Chippenham. Picked in Publishing, ISBN 9780948251009, Wyndham, Violet, Protestant Duke, Life of the Duke of Monmouth, London, Weidenfeld and Nicholson, ISBN 9780297770992.